welcome. Welcome to another episode of Talking Art. I'm Jane Treger, and we are talking with local artists, one after the other, every week. Today, we have Ed Kaplan. Ed, welcome. Thank you. So, we have a lot of stuff of yours here, and it's big, and flashy, and interesting, and where would we begin? First of all, how about this? Where are you from? I'm from uh, Queens, New York. As if that weren't obvious from your accent. I can't hide it. No, you can't hide it. So what brought you to this area? Well, I've been in Queens for about 20 years, and I met my wife there um, 15 years ago. She's from this area, and uh, she's been trying to get me to move up here for 15 years. So. Um, we have two young daughters now, and we thought the time was right, so we just went for it. So you live here in which town? In Sunderland in for Sunderland, uh, two right, months now. Right nearby. So we're here at the Deerfield Arts Bank, and you're showing with us in this current exhibit uh, called Black and White and Red, R-E-A-D, all over. And the piece that is in the show is this one back here, The Village Diner. Uh, but we're not going to start with that one. We're going to start with something a little earlier. And I think it's this, right? Yes, Jane. Now, did you do this while you were a student, while you were working in art? How, how, did, you dis how did you get from being this kid in Queens, or wherever it is you grew up, to this point? Was there a, was there a piece of history you'd like to tell us in here? Um, in terms of art? Well, I've always been, um, you know, interested in doing photorealistic art, and traditionally we know most paintings are on canvas, but uh, as an artist, I was looking to do something a little bit different, and I uh, kept seeing uh, people throwing away old TVs, and uh, I just came up with the idea of putting an image actually on the TV. So, can I touch this? Sure. Uh-huh. So you've painted on the glass. That's correct. What I, did you paint with? Uh, I used a special primer first to um, adhere to the glass, and then I used the traditional acrylic paints that I use on canvas, and um, we've had no issues of, you know, the paint coming off. And This is, um, this is a nightmare. You can't change the channel. No, we can't. It's it's on no. you know it's on pause permanently. Permanent permanent pause with um, what is this? That's Jack Nicholson from The Shining. It's like very strange and very wonderful at the same time. So where did you learn to paint? Well, my grandfather, he was an artist, and he worked also in the photorealistic style. And um, as a young boy going to visit him, I was fascinated by his work, and I just wondered, you know, like, how is that done? How could I do it? And I just, uh, you know, when I go to visit him, we would draw still lifes and... Um, he taught me, you know, that's the most important thing, is drawing, and then eventually you learn how to paint. And um, it was in high school that I started painting, and it was a little frustrating at first, because you couldn't get that photorealistic look right away, but uh, over time, just practicing and, you know, looking up other artists who, Chuck Close being one of my favorites, um, you know, just inspired by what he did and uh, pushing myself, you know, in that direction to get that. That was in high school? Yeah. So did you go off to college and study art there? I studied art, but advertising art, which I never got into advertising. I just... Um, but it's, it's photorealism, isn't it? Um, and a lot of the classes were design, and that, which is actually, I think, super important in a painting, because without design, composition, you're never really going to have a good painting. Mm -hmm. So there were things that I took from those classes, but not actually um, you know, learning how to paint or giving me my technique in how I paint. 
So, so you, you, you were at a, at a regular college at, at, I, I have here at, at State University of New York in, in Farmingdale. Yes, correct. You were in their art department or their advertising department? It was advertising art, yeah. Uh -huh. I got an associate's uh -huh. degree. So did you, did you then make a living doing this work? Uh, well, you said you didn't go into advertising. No, after I graduated, I started to do murals um, throughout Long Island, and um, I did that for a couple years, and um, then eventually I made my way out west, um, left Long Island, and just wanted to see the country. I drove out with a couple of friends to um, Boulder, Colorado. Did you drive in a... In a car or in a motorcycle? I, I drove in my car. We're getting to the motorcycles. Uh -huh. I, um, I I didn't stay um, in Colorado very long. It, it snowed like September 1st, and I was like, I'm out of here. And then it's not I, much better here. <laughs> yeah, I found that out. Uh, <laughs> but um, then I went to Portland, Oregon, and I was there for a couple years. But... Um, that was when I started to get into doing custom airbrushing, um, motorcycles and helmets. How did you pick up the airbrush? Well, I, um, I had a fire in my house and then I became homeless. Um, I was working for a local um, bar owner that bought a building and I was doing some painting for him there. It was an abandoned building. He told me I could, you know, stay in the building. I was living in the building and um, then I answered an ad to do sign painting. I showed the you know, guy my work. He said, oh, I, I really like your work and I think we could use you doing custom, you know, airbrushing vehicles, motorcycles, helmets, uh -huh. do you airbrush? I said, no, I took it in college, but I was really frustrated with it. I said, but uh, you know what? I'm going to call up my mother. I'm going to tell her to send me that airbrush and I'm going to learn how to use that thing. And I did. You mean you had an airbrush that you didn't know how to use? Right. I took in college. I oh, took I it for one semester and I uh -huh. just threw it into the corner and uh -huh. it was very frustrating. I, I couldn't get it to work. But this I is guess very inspiring. When I my, have to tell you. When my back was up against the wall and I can get a job doing it, I said, I'm going to I'm going to learn how to use this thing. And uh, I well, just, I think you successfully did that. Yeah. I so was. let's see. We have we have uh, four examples of airbrushed work here. Yes. Right? Well, some, my my own paintings, I do use an airbrush as uh, well. On this, yeah. Um, yeah. All of them have a little airbrushing in. Oh, them. okay. I, it's kind of back and forth with the traditional brush as well as an airbrush. The um, the custom. Um, Helmets and gas tanks, that's really more airbrushed because it's a smooth surface and you really can't build up the paint like you can on canvas. It's a lot less forgiving. You know, I'm looking over here. I just want to go back to these TVs. Then we have another one over here uh, that's in black and white. So it brought me back to my childhood, actually. Um, do you have a lot of these? I did a series of uh, 10 of them. And are they all Jack Nicholas? Uh, no, they. Um, it's all within that uh, same genre of horror films. So, um, <laughs> so I'm not sure why that's funny, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I have um, Al Pacino from yeah. you know Scarface and okay. this Jack Nicholson from The Shining. Okay, um, so no, I, I got, I got. It. I just I suddenly had realized, like, well, well, what about this other one over here? So, so now we have these four airbrush things. So, that some of them are helmets. What are those things? Uh, those are Harley Davidson gas tanks. Oh, so they just live as gas tanks without their without the rest of the motorcycle. Yes, I um, I did them as I was, you know, doing custom um, airbrushing. I would take them around to different uh, motorcycle shops, Harley Davidson shops, so I could actually show the owners uh -huh. a physical piece of work. Yes. It's better than showing them a photograph. So I did them for myself to, uh, you know, just advertise. So this one this one in wood is is uh 
pretty remarkable. You you could actually make a whole car look like a Woody, right? Yes, that is correct. I um, I was also doing um, making a living doing decorative painting, and I would do a lot of wood graining and marbleizing. So I I took that and incorporated it into my custom work. Um, so where did you do that? This was for people's homes and, and, and public buildings and stuff? Yeah, in New York City, a lot of the landmarks um, from Radio City Music Hall to um, Lincoln Center. And you mean it's not really marble? Well, some are marble and then other <laughs> and areas some of them are, yours. Are, are, are painted uh, to look oh. like marble. And, you know, hopefully just people can't tell the difference. I don't think I could. <laughs> um, but so yeah. that's, a, that's a great way to make a living, I would guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got to, you know, see a lot of great places and be in, you know, these areas that, you know, normally you know, the regular person doesn't get to go. Um, I did some wood graining in the uh, Johnson & Johnson family home on uh, Fifth Avenue. And, um, you yeah, know, a lot of other fancy Fifth Avenue, Park Avenue apartments that, you know, the average person never gets to see. So it, w it was pretty exciting. So let's move on to what's, let's see, I think you said this would be the next one? This large one with the sunrise or sunset? Yeah, yes, that's uh, one of the first of my uh, urban landscape series. I. Um, this looks very shiny, just about as shiny as these helmets. Yes, How do you it get is. that? It's like glass. Yes, because I use the same... Um, Are we talking oil here? The, the, um, the paint is still acrylic paint, but uh -huh. I put a urethane clear coat, the same clear coat that I put on to the, uh, the gas tanks and the helmets. So I kind of incorporate my art from, you know, one area to the next. So that's why it's so shiny, because it has a urethane clear coat, the same thing that's on a brand new car. So you could wax this painting? Yeah, you could wax and buff it. it <laughs> buff if, the painting. I mean, I don't know how shiny you want it to get. No, 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 pretty no, no. Shiny <laughs> pretty as shiny it is. as it is. So what street are we at? What intersection in um, New York? This is um, in downtown Brooklyn on Livingston Street. And um, I was working in the area and um, for a couple weeks. And, you know, every morning I would see the sunrise come and, you know, through the street like that and I just thought it was a great uh, shot and it was inspiring to me. I brought my camera one day and I took a few shots and uh, this was my favorite one so I made a painting of it. Okay, so we go from this really shiny surface, very slick patina here, to this one here that looks like you've... I'm not sure, what, how did you get this effect that's all bumpy? Well, it goes I, very well with the bricks on that building. Yeah, if, if I that mean, is bricks, no, uh, that's not. It's it, that is clapboard actually. Yeah, that's yeah. the Bridge Cafe. It's one of the oldest um, restaurants, bars running in Manhattan. I think it dates back to like the late 1700s, and it didn't close during Prohibition either. Um, is this the Williamsburg Bridge or the uh, that Brooklyn Bridge? That is the Bridge. Brooklyn Bridge, Brooklyn and Bridge. this is on the Manhattan side. And that's actually my wife and my first daughter in the stroller that we cannot see. Right. Um, but I was, um, I was kind of experimenting with textures, whether it be very smooth or um, somewhat rough. And I was, um, I was doing some work on one of my motorcycle tanks. This is how I got the inspiration to texture the canvas. I was using, uh, repairing some damage on the tank with Bondo and I had a piece of board that I was working with and by the time it was all done it had all this texture on it and you know I thought that, that looks pretty cool why don't we just um, prime that thing white and I'm going to use it as a canvas so I did a is painting. that what this is on well this no that was just that the inspiration this is actually on canvas so then I replicated what I did with, with Bondo that board. yes so that, no. Yeah, that's Bondo is... Ladies um, and gentlemen, Bondo is what you fix the holes in your car with. And you can add it to your canvas and paint I, on top I'm of it. I'm completely bewildered. <laughs> Which I did here. That is very 
odd. But the, 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 but the effect is wonderful. I mean, could you, in fact, have achieved that same effect with some other things like gesso? Uh, yeah, they have uh, hard um, molding paste. And I actually eventually started using that. It's a lot less toxic uh, than Bondo, which is, um, you know, you can get a Bondo headache and trying to uh, stay, uh, you know, more uh, healthier and working with... Uh, less chemicals so um, you can achieve that with um, molding paste that they have now and you know I've messing around with that as I still um, like to you know ha have different textures incorporated into my paintings I just felt like the bridge cafe uh, being that it was so ancient I, I thought it would really suit the painting and that was why I really loaded it up with what time of day is it um, it is, um, well, we had dinner at the Bridge Cafe and we were getting ready to um, head back home. We, were, we walked over the bridge, so it's probably around uh, 7 o'clock at this time. It must be summer. The sky is so light. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it was probably getting, you know. But the lights are on. They go, yeah. Yeah, it was probably, you know, somewhere around twilight, maybe late. It's a very August. nice time of day. Yeah. It's a very special time of day. So where do we go from here? What's the next one? Um, that would be this one. Who are all these people? Um, well, friends and family. Um, it's my wife here um, holding the stroller. And then my daughter Stella with her diaper butt. And um, friends of mine, Mark and Meredith and their son Noah. In front of somebody's door. <laughs> yeah, well, we just, this was at another restaurant. Um, we had just finished having lunch there. It was a Mexican restaurant on the um, That's Lower okay. East Side. You took the picture. Yes. And you go home and you, and, you, and you pick a picture that you want to paint. Yeah, I put it up on the computer and I say, hey, I, I really like that one. And I think it's worthy of a painting. And that's, that's how I work. Usually, you know, it, it's inspired from taking a walk, um, whether it be with the family or just by myself. And I have my camera and um, just take shots of things that really interest me. And then I put them up on the computer and see uh, if, I, if I like anything, if it's worthy of a painting. Now you're going to explain to me why you go from doing this very realistic candid shot of this group of people in, f in normal color. Why you choose to do this in, well, black and white and gray. Um, Where is this, by the way? This, Leopard Street. Yeah, this is in Kew Gardens, where I had just been uh, living for the past 12 years uh, before I moved to Sunderland two months ago. And uh, I, I've always been, I mean, I love working with color, but I've always um, been attracted to the black and white painting. And I, I do one every once in a while. I've done a few and I, I notice people tend to almost like those more than the others for some reason. I don't, but I, I do like them. And um, you mean by you like the, the color I like more the, than the black and white, but you like them both? Yes. Okay. Um, I just felt like this shot um, would work best in black and white. Well, it's very busy, so it, it does work. It, it, the unifying factor may have been changing it to black and white. I mean, I, I don't know what it looked like before, but it was probably quite busy. Yeah, I mean, well, you've got focus. all this construction going on, um, which I, I kind of... I like that, and that was, you know, why I did the painting. Some people, oh, you got all this construction going on. I said, yes, I know, I, I like that. <laughs> That's why I did it. Right. All right, so, uh, and, then, and then is this the next one on the, in the series that we're looking at? Uh, yes. We also have the other landscapes, um, and, and I think we'll just show those unless there's something you'd like to say about them just because we have some images of these. Um, those they're, are also, they're over here, but a little further away from my eyesight. Yeah, they're... Because, um, because these paintings are very large. What are these sizes? These are 36, 48, these two. This That's is, four feet wide. That's big. Yes. Yes. Um, so um, these other ones are landscapes 
of New York as well, the sub of the boroughs of New York. Yeah, well, one is actually of uh, Montauk. That's um, the Pizza Village. Um, I was out there in the summertime, and um, I got inspiration. And um, and the other one is a shot from Brooklyn, local gold. I was walking around the neighborhood and um, just got inspiration. This is a real challenge, Ed. You've moved to an area that does not have all these kinds of little... Well, there we have them. You're going to have to go find them. All these little diners and eateries and places uh, yes. like this. And, You're going to have to... And I will find them. You will find them all. <laughs> they're there. They're there. There are plenty because of I them. I love those places. But people don't normally paint them, and you will be the painter of these places. Well, I, I love those places, and uh, that's really what uh, Here's something that me. doesn't exist in this area. No. The New York Yellow Cab. No. I, I've been wanting to do a cab for a long time, um, and I know, you know, they've, they, they've been done before, but uh, the, I decided I was going to do a little bit differently. I had done uh, another painting that I had a puddle um, reflecting, and uh, people loved it, you know, so I thought, uh, why don't we do a few more? And this one is actually right at the um, the foot of the Manhattan Bridge. It is to the left of the image, and um, and the East River is right there. So uh, I just uh, had my camera out, and uh, this taxi was approaching, and I just got the timing right. It was something that I wanted to get, um, and. I was snapping my <laughs> uh, camera, and I got the right shot, so... Um, you went to find a puddle, and then you waited for something to come by. Is that what you did? Um, well, I think it all just came together. It was, you know, I it mean, yes, it's point. true. I look for puddles, and then the taxi just kind of came out of nowhere, and I guess that's sort of how it works, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, it's a particular taxi. It's SK-58. Yes. That's like, I mean, we could find that taxi if we That's wanted true. to, right? So we have particular places of eating. We have particular joints. This is less particular. And then, and then <laughs> we have a particular taxi. And this one here is more global. This is the globe. I, did, I, I think, I have to say, I just noticed. Here's South America. Here's the United States and Canada. Here's Europe, Middle East. Yeah. This is the globe. This is you get a chance to make your head into a globe. Yeah, I had done. Um, oh, the, maybe fifth, when I first started airbrushing, or when I first moved back to New York City, I was um, using my airbrushing skills to um, paint a. Um, I was working for a model maker, and he was doing. Um, the uh, solar system for the uh, Oklahoma City Planetarium. So I was painting, uh, airbrushing all of the planets. And, um, uh, you know, Jupiter was like nine feet uh, in diameter. It was huge. And then the Earth was, um, you know, to scale. So it was about this big. And um, it was just another um, way of taking that and incorporated it into my the custom airbrushing. I thought, you know, the helmet. So, so do you paint first the the land masses um, by, with a brush? Well, first uh, I'll spray out the whole helmet white, so it's a blank canvas for me, and then I will draw. Um, you know, I'll draw out the you know basic drawing of uh, just the shapes of the you know, continents, and then uh, I just start filling it in with airbrush. It's, it's, this is really all airbrush. So the clouds is what's left behind. Uh, yeah, well, that's the last thing, because you could see there's even, you know, shadow um, onto the... Uh, oh, the clouds are br airbrushed on yeah, as well. Yes, everything is airbrushed but on I, I, I was thinking that they're white, so that that's the canvas behind. No, no. no. Well, sometimes I will use the, the white um, if, you know, uh, necessary, but no, not in this case, because you can see there is some color blues and purples mm -hmm, mm -hmm. within the white. Some storms going on. Yeah, a little action there. 
There's no political intent here. It's not like you've got special storms going on in special places, huh? No, no. there's no global warming or anything like that. It's just uh, a nice shot of the Earth. It is indeed. And there's the North Pole. I think I see Santa Claus. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and what's... Uh, oh, there's no South Pole. <laughs> Yeah, so I think this is actually I don't I think we could leave with these two together here very nicely. Are you now you're new in this area, right? You arrived very recently. Yes, two months ago. And are you getting to show? Are you, are you getting into the galleries? Uh, I, yes. I know I met you because you just walked into the gallery one day. Yeah, I have um, you know sending my uh, images out and getting positive responses. Um, a lot of the galleries don't have openings until um, late in the year, um, next year, early spring, as well as um, 2017. Oh they, dear. Um, want me, uh, you know, for a show? So. Um, yeah, I'm getting. So you'll uh, have time to paint those local joints. Yeah, and I'm I'm venturing into a new um, Jerry's place, right here in town. I think is one of your. Oh, I haven't been there. Yet. Oh yeah, I'll have to walk by there with you. Okay. And then there's Wolfie's, but Jerry's place really fits in with these kinds of places. We'll have to we'll have to simulate some construction in front. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I, we can arrange Maybe you can these things. Go out there with a jackhammer. That no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> there, there already was something that happened, we <laughs> and they've reconstructed. You just came a little too late. So um, I'm looking. Um, so you're currently working on a new series. Yes, I am. I. Um, it, it's really inspired from the. The reflecting puddles, uh -huh. and um, that's the direction that the new, uh, it'll still be urban landscapes, but um, with a, you know, a, a focus on reflections. So um, that is uh, where we're heading. I just started one recently um, last week. Well, we're going to have a new exhibit after this one called Land Escapes, and I'm expecting and hoping that you'll have some things for me for that one. I think yeah. I will. Good, yeah. Urban landscapes. Yeah. So, um, you're, we know where you're getting your inspirations from. We know your skill sets. Maybe, you'll, we, maybe we'll be finding some motorcycles around here that are worked on by you, yes? No? Or um, some murals around on those, those buildings that desperately need something? Yeah. Are you I, up for those I'm, as well? Sure. I mean, as an artist, uh, I, you know, I paint, You'll anything. paint anything. I paint anything, and um, that's what I've been doing. I've been. Uh, once do, you, do you want old TV still? No, I, I stopped um, that, with that series. Maybe eventually I'll pick it back up, but I'll be using the flat screens. It's oh, well. a lot easier to um, take around to galleries, and I think. Um, Easier for people to, uh, ha you know, find a place in their home for them because you can hang them just like a canvas. So um, oh. it's, you know, on the back burner. But that would be uh, the direction that we would go with TVs, flat screens. Flat screens. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ed, for sharing all of this with us. You're welcome. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the galleries. And in this gallery and in other galleries and we wish you and your family a very happy transition to the Pioneer Valley. Thank People you. who come here usually end up happy here so I wish the same to you and um, thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you also out in the um, viewing audience for joining us today and um, we're here at the Deerfield Arts Bank and we will continue interviewing local artists. If you have some questions that you feel I'm not asking and that you'd like me to ask the artists, or if you have somebody you'd like to suggest for an interview, please uh, contact me at the email below on the screen. And uh, thank you very much.